These here are red blood cells under the microscope. And uh, today in this video, I would like to show you two methods on how you can prepare a blood microscope slide. And I'll also be showing you a staining technique to make white blood cells uh, visible. Yes, uh, I started off uh, by using a lancet, uh, a sterile lancet to prick myself. I brought this, uh, bought this in a drugstore. It's uh, used for taking small blood samples, for example, if you want to measure your blood sugar level. Um, there are different types uh, available. This one is, I think, uh, one of the more challenging ones because you can actually see when you actually prick yourself. There are also those pens available that uh, are psychologically maybe a little bit more, um, yeah, easier to use. Well, um, you only need a very small uh, drop. Um, of blood. As a matter of fact, too much blood makes, uh, uh, makes it difficult to see the individual blood cells. And uh, because of the, the wound, the hole is so small, I really had to press a little bit to squeeze out a small uh, amount of blood. Um, I placed it uh, on the side of a microscope slide. Um, and then you need uh, a second slide uh, to spread the blood. And what I'm doing right now here is, is uh, watch carefully, I'm holding the second slide at an angle and I'm now dragging the blood along. I'm not pushing it, but I'm dragging it and this way I prevent the blood cells from becoming crushed and squeezed between the two, um, two uh, glass slides. Um, after a few seconds it already starts uh, drying up you can actually see that um, and uh, if there is too much blood here then it's going to look too dark and then the blood cells will overlap. Luckily here uh, the situation is just uh, right. Um, the red blood cells are flat uh, on the glass surface and they are now basically from a top view. Uh, they're not moving, of course. Uh, the reason is, is because uh, the, the blood already has dried and you can see that there is also some space uh, between the blood cells. So this means that the density is just right. I'm now doing a little bit of staining. This is Löffler's solution. It's a methylene blue solution with a little bit of alcohol and also potassium um, hydroxide. Um, I used a little bit too much uh, of this staining solution. So it's not pure uh, methylene blue but it's uh, just uh, in the right concentration. You can buy these uh, stains commercially readily, readily made. Um, I'm just removing a little bit of uh, the excess stain and here in the center we can already see um, a white blood cell. The red blood cells uh, around it, they have a little bit lost their shape. Maybe some of them started to break up because of the alcohol. Um, but the uh, white blood cell in the center um, is actually quite nicely visible and you see that in the center of the white blood cell there is a darker irregularly shaped region and that is the nucleus. Um, some white blood cells have an irregularly shaped nucleus and depending on the shape you can actually um, categorize and classify the different types of, uh, of white blood cells here. Um, obvi obviously there are many more red blood cells uh, visible than there are white blood cells here. Slightly larger uh, magnification again. It, uh, you call this polymorph nucleated. I love these uh, complex terms. Polymorph means uh, different uh, types of shapes and it's very typical for some white blood cells to have a nucleus that has these lobes and depending on the shape of the nucleus again um, you're able to categorize the white blood cells. Now um, we're going to now I also want to show you now a second way of actually observing blood and in this case uh, we are going to uh, use a large cover glass. Yes uh, again I have uh, to prick uh, myself a little bit with the lancet uh, yeah and uh, yeah, here <laughs> this one is a little bit uh, more <laughs> I try to get a little bit more blood out in this case here um, and um, now I'm placing the drop of blood um, yeah again on the side of the microscope uh, slide and now I'm, I'm using a fairly large cover glass. Now, of course, you can use also the regularly sized cover glasses, but then the, blood, the amount of blood has to be, of course, much less. This one is a large one. It covers um, almost completely the complete slide. And look what happens now. Due to capillary action, the blood now starts to spread beneath uh, the, uh, the cover glass, and it also creates a very thin film. The blood is more concentrated on one side than on the other. Um, but if you uh, look at the far end, then you can actually see that uh, here, too, the red blood cells are visible, and they are also flat because they're squeezed between the cover glass and the microscope slide um, but now they are still moving because everything is liquid and now I can of course also um, yeah, go up with the magnification a little bit and um, observe um, the actual shape of, uh, of the blood cells. Now um, it is also possible to of course change the, um, the imaging uh, techniques here so I switched around using different contrasting techniques and you can also see that um, yeah, in some cases uh, the, yeah, there are some, seem to be some kind of obstructions uh, in the way. Sometimes these are indeed white blood cells. It can also be dust and dirt. Um, that is on the microscope slide and you can actually see how the red blood cells are moving um, uh, around that. And if you wait a little bit longer then you can of course also see how the blood starts to dry up and how um, it actually the blood cells start to stack up. But right now here that's pretty much uh, their normal shape. Red blood cells have a diameter of approximately 8 to 10 micrometers. 
So that's uh, fairly fairly small, and uh, they are sometimes only able to squeeze uh, through between um, between uh, through the capillaries, right? Uh, because the capillary diameter is not much larger than those here. Yeah, and over here um, again, this is a, a fresh uh, blood sample, but here the blood cells um, essentially yeah started to um, yeah become stationary. Yeah, and then basically uh, everything starts over again over here. And of course, you want to uh, dispose of those lancets later on again because yeah for hygienic reasons. Reasons. Just wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope that you like uh, this, uh, like this uh, short tutorial video, and um, yeah, just make sure that you also disinfect your fingers a little bit before you prick yourself. Happy micro punting as always. Hope to see you again in the next video. Bye bye.